Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to uh, present our closing panel. This will give us an opportunity to reflect on what we've taken away from today. I'm delighted to get to introduce each of our panelists. Um, I, I'll start with Marcella Mandeville. She's explored the world of business through a globally focused business undergraduate degree, designation as a certified international trade professional, and more than 20 years of global experience developing and implementing business strategies. A career highlight has been taking on leadership roles at Alberta Women Entrepreneurs to support AWE's goals to build stronger communities and economies through women's participation in entrepreneurship. Marcella believes strongly in continuous learning and co contributing to the community. She serves as director for the Women's Enterprise Organizations of Canada, director of Explore Edmonton, and volunteers on the University of Alberta School of Business Advisory Committee, works for Women Advisory Board, and the Edmonton Mayor's Business Growth Council. Next, I'll introduce Tracy Berry. Tracy is a career strategist and recruiter. As the founder and CEO of Grow Women Leaders, uh, their table's over there. Tracy is dedicated to promoting equity, diversity, inclusion, and accessibility in workplaces. Her focus is helping women, especially immigrants and minorities, secure meaningful employment and advance their careers. At Grow Women Leaders, women are connected with job opportunities through its digital talent platform, fostering personal and professional growth. While the growth space is designed to be a flourishing and nurturing environment, offering nurture services, a continuous growth support encompassing training, workspaces, event venues, and childminding, all meticulously designed to improve retention. Uh, we've heard a lot about how those uh, different wraparound services are so important. So um, the proceeds from Nurture go directly to support the Women at Grow Foundation. Tracy has received numerous awards and recognitions for her contributions to building a more equitable and inclusive society. Next, we have Arsu Sabor. She works at EMCN as a program coordinator for the IWIN, Immigrant Women Integration and Network Program and Global Girls Program. Arsu has worked for at EMCN for 13 years in different positions and supported newcomers with resume writing, job search, cold calls, mock interviews, and community connections. Arzu moved to Canada from Iran in January of 2002 as an international student. She studied psychology at University of Saskatchewan and started volunteering and working in non-for-profit agencies, supporting immigrants while studying. She worked at the Saskatchewan Inter Intercultural Association as program coordinator and program manager for over three years. She then moved to Edmonton in 2010 and has been working for EMCN since. Empowering women is Arzu's passion. Next, we have Roisin McCabe. Um, the, she's the director of the Status of Women Policy and Engagement at Arts, Culture, and Status of Women um, with the Government of Alberta. Her portfolio includes economic, or women's economic development, sexual violence prevention, and Alberta's implementation of the National Action Plan to End Gender-Based Violence. Roisin has a Master's of Arts in Politics from University of College Dublin and a Bachelor's of Arts in Political Science from the University of Calgary. Um, I'm also so happy to have Shannon Peston joining us on the panel as well. Um, she's already been with us all day, so I won't introduce her again because it uh, her she, her accolades are so long that it will take us five minutes to get through the introductions. Um, but thank you for being here. So for our panel, we have two questions. We'll start with the first one, and maybe we'll start. Um, are you ready to be the beginning? Yeah. Okay, we're going to start at that end, and we're going to come this way. Uh, so our first question is, in reflecting back on the conversation during the day, what stood out to you, and what are you taking away? Uh, yeah, so there, I mean, there's a lot of things to take away. I feel I had some, some uh, sort of advance notice. I was helping to work with PolicyWise to prepare the day. Uh, but the biggest takeaway is just what a, what a diverse... A variety of people that we have that care so passionately about advancing women in our province. And what really struck me is that uh, the majority of folks that I'm meeting today are new to meeting. And perhaps we've met before on Zoom or something, but to meet in person. And I think that's wonderful to have more and more people included in the conversation and more voices being heard and represented. So I really took away, I mean, there's some 
I took a lot of notes and I feel bad I didn't come. I feel like I should borrow someone's paper to have paper in front of me. Um, I always have notes and then I never follow them. But the biggest takeaway I think was just, um, even in the, the, work, the, the breakout session that I was in this morning, um, where I wasn't one of the facilitators, it was really how one idea was building on another and there was no but, it was all and. <laughs> and so it was saying, we can layer on these supports. This is how we can work together. This is how we can advocate collectively uh, to make this kind of difference. And the connection between um, employment of those that are underemployed, uh, the connection with um, increasing skills and reskilling and entrepreneurship and all of the other things that go along with being a woman in today's society. So I think we have lots more work and progress to take. So I really want to thank Policy Wise. I think there was just great discussion. These are things that I feel like I live and breathe every single day. So it was wonderful to look at it from some new perspectives and to actually take away some new relationships, some new conversations, and that we're going to continue to make progress and take action as we go forward and, and not just talking but action. Um, yes, ditto to all that stuff. Um, collaboration is such a key. Government can't do it by itself. Not-for-profits can't do it by themselves. And industry can't do it by themselves. So, you know, events like this really stress the importance of collaboration, all working together. Um, it is still such a novelty to be in a room with real people and not see them on Zoom. And just the conversations that you can have at lunchtime, at the coffee breaks, and you know, learn more about what people are doing is super important. Um, I've been working with PolicyWise and Taya and her team on this uh, since I started in this position about 18 months ago. So, so exciting to see it come to fruition. Um, and again, just wonderful discussions. Um, you know, some of the takeaways that we heard today, and again, I have lots of notes back at my table. Um, you know, the access to funding and some of the challenges that uh, women have in, in accessing funding. Um, and what can we as government do to make that process a bit easier? Uh, I know that my team is at the back there and we've certainly, you know, have some things that we'll be taking back to our, our senior leadership on that. Uh, the importance of financial literacy for women, um, you know, credit and access to credit and things like that. Um, and just really inspired by the discussions today. Um, I've made, we made lots of connections and we lots of follow-up conversations to have. Thank you. I feel like I have talked all day, but I also just want to say thank you so much to everyone for opening up your, your hearts and your thoughts. And I think there was a lot of wisdom capital that was, was shared today. One of the things that is always kind of nice for us to hear as practitioners who are in this work every day is, again, when we hear from those field catalysts, I loved that term, um, just that what we see and what we feel is true and what we're seeing in the research is validated by still the work that we're hearing from the field. So I think it's so important to have conversations like this where we're convening the ecosystem. You know, I'm very fortunate because I have come in today from Calgary. Um, but I am so wishing that many of our Calgary um, counterparts and counterparts up in the northern part of the province and the southern part, uh, we're very fortunate that we're in big cities like this that can convene, but there's so many other um, people across the province that I think would benefit. So I'm happy to see that this is going to be uh, broadcasted to a wider audience. Um, and also I'll say that entrepreneurship from my perspective whether it's working with um, Indigenous women entrepreneurs or Black entrepreneurs or newcomer entrepreneurs. Um, I, I just see entrepreneurship as such a pathway to economic self-sufficiency. So for those of you who are in, working in the ecosystem as well, working as employers or working with it with other employers, to recognize that for many women coming out of employment, entrepreneurship is often fueled by uh, necessity. And so looking for those entrepreneurial uh, minded individuals that are in your organizations as well and encouraging more entrepreneurship uh, learning because I, I just see that that is such a pathway for women to create and sustain their own, their own economic futures. So thank you, I'll pass it on over. Thank you so much. Um, just wanted to thank you Tia and her team when she contacted EMCN and we started talking about um, what's happening with women, with employment, and what EMCN's, e EMCN is offering when COVID happens. And that's how the conversation started. So I appreciate um, bringing up um, the ideas to us and collecting data, having those workshops for women, experiencing 
um, barriers. Um, from today's session, what I got is like getting connection with different agencies who are offering similar programming and um, driving that positive change um, for women who are struggling and still there's so much to do. And I'm glad that we all are here um, to, to listen to each other and understand what's happening and helping each other to make, uh, make that positive change happen for women. Thank you. All right, uh, for me, I think uh, I just went to um, the, the whole session today. I've literally helped me to learn a lot. And uh, it's like um, everything that I've been missing uh, for a long time, just having access to this. It's like a mini MBA for me today. Uh, I feel everyone that uh, uh, the facilitator and that, that had the workshop, um, they really talk about things that I've been seeing as a practitioner in my field that I can easily take back. Uh, to the candidates that we work with. And most importantly, I was, I think I was in the entrepreneurial workshop a little bit and everything that was talked about was everything that we see every day with our candidates and everything that I learned and we were spoken about is what I'm taking back to my community that I'm from. And uh, the last one that I just uh, attended now, which is around human rights and uh, um, a, a commissioner, uh, I just felt that our, our uh, candidates and the employers that we're working with, they need to hear that. I was so pushed to speak to the facilitator to say, you know what, this is a credible information um, that has to be heard more. And yeah, so I really enjoy every bit and all the connection that we have made, I have made so far. You know, I just feel that uh, uh, it's, it's life changing. So yeah, this is really incredible. And thank you so much for uh, including me to be part of this. Thank you all so much. Um, from what I heard, uh, we clearly got the title of this event right, because there is inspiration for action, there's um, connections that have been made, um, we heard about the importance of funding and about entrepreneurship as a pathway to economic freedom for, or independence for women, we heard uh, that um, collaboration is so important within the sector, especially with organizations that are doing similar work to us. So um, I'm really glad that, that those are the takeaways that you had because that's sort of what we hoped for this event. So thank you so much. Our last question and our second question is where do we go from here? How can we build the crucial connections that can transform the ecosystem for women to thrive? Well, I'll pick up on the, the very first session, the workshop that we had where we were talking about, you know, three policy, three funding, three program opportunities in particular around uh, women's entrepreneurship. And those are, I think that when I was reading what was posted up on the wall, uh, and there's some fantastic action items to move forward with and a lot of similarity even between the three tables, even though you're having very distinct discussions it was really clear that there's, I think, a lot of alignment with, with where we see the needs are. So even just taking that and being able to move it forward, which I know is the whole point of it, and being able to say, here's some, here's some solid things that we can start to work on and work through and get more uh, discussion, but also some action. So can we pilot some of these things? Um, can we start to actually move these forward? I was just chatting with, with someone about actually just piloting smaller things that we can then see how are we making progress here? Is this, you know, is this fundable on a bigger scale? Who should be involved? Um, and being able to really leverage the collective strengths that we have. We're all doing incredible work in our own ways and often in our own silos. So how can we actually build that out and bring bring those, I think those strengths and, and the, the wonderful things that people are doing to move things forward through action uh, across the entire province together. So this is, I feel, of like one of the many steps that we need to take. But the bigger thing is, I think there's some already some great, uh, even the second work, you know, the second session that we were in where we were talking about some of the barriers and challenges and what to do, there's some great ideas and actionable items that came out of that. And, you know, how can we put our resources together to move it forward? Yeah, and I think continue to have conversations like this where you're bringing large groups of people together. Because um, I think a lot of that is information sharing and raising awareness. Um, I know that we've had some great conversations. I was talking to, to Shan at the break. Um, and I think for a lot of people, it's like, so where do, 
how do we go to the next step? Um, and I think for us at the Status of Women branch, it is, you know, making us aware of what is out there, coming to us with a proposal, and how can we collaborate between government and the organizations uh, to bring this forward. So I really think raising that awareness uh, is certainly key for us. Thank you, and I, maybe I'll just pick up on collaboration too. I think sometimes we think we have to do everything by ourselves, but today we met so many people in our own ecosystem where, you know, if you had an idea for, I'll just make an example of black entrepreneurs, something, doing something new, like calling up the people that you've met here today saying like, let's just chat about this. Like, what could we all do together? Um, I think we just sometimes forget that we're all trying to solve very similar problems and there's a lot of learning that we can get from one another. So looking at those opportunities for funding where we can actually come together. A lot of the funding that I have seen at the federal level has been successful when a network of networks gets together and submits one proposal for a project. Um, and certainly, like I, I will always say that you feel free to reach out to me anytime if there's anything that I can ever do to be of assistance to anyone in this ecosystem. And I'm sure that everybody would feel that same way. It'd be great to get a list of people's LinkedIn or something coming out of this so that we can continue to build um, those relationships. And I also just want to say too that I know um, Marcel and I were joking a little bit earlier. Like we've been, you know, we've been living and breathing this work for Marcella longer than I. <laughs> she's like she's like my older sister. But, um, you know, it, it can be exhausting work. There's a lot of emotional labor. There's a lot of times where you feel like you're, you know, pushing water up a hill in a bucket full of holes. And this is what this work is all about when we're looking at around, you know, equity, diversity, inclusion, and accessibility. It's, it's not for the faint of heart. And so I just want to encourage everyone to keep going. And somebody admit, it was Rochelle, I guess, earlier that said, you know, I stand on the shoulders of my ancestors and think about what the work that we're doing, how that's paving a way for, in our Indigenous communities, we'll say, for the next seven generations. But each of us has that in us to be able to shape the world that we want to see, and hopefully one that is a lot more inclusive and sustainable, where everyone has those equal opportunities. Thank you, Taya, to you and your team, and to WAGE, and to government for showing up status of women for all that you're doing as well, um, and also for everybody on the ground. Um, to me, I think um, if I'm talking about talking from the non not for profit perspectives and and women who are uh, providing services to, I think there should be more conversation with frontline staff who are um, dealing or working with um, women. Um, more conversation needs to happen to find out what the barriers are and what what is what are the needs and then from there um, create policies and and uh, um, act upon what is what is needed and instead of like sitting and having those conversations without hearing the stories um, I feel like everyone can do but hearing the stories finding um, what's needed and then act upon it is is more important I think Thanking again Tia and her team, reaching out to us and, and trying to find out what is needed. Um, more work um, to be done. And thank you, thank you for doing that. Um, for me, um, I think it's just a validation um, of uh, that there are still many uh, um, gaps that needs to be filled, being it in employment and being it in uh, entrepreneurship. And yeah, that uh, more work needs to be done and more, you know, events like this or initiatives like this need to be done. And most importantly, I feel um, um, that uh, even with the work that I see that needs to be done, that it's going to take more organization to work collaboratively to get it done because the work that has to be done, it's a lot of work. So um, this is just that high opening uh, um, uh, event, I have to say, uh, to really validate that. Oh, wow. Wow. And of course, validating, you know, the complaints and of course, the, the stories that we're getting from our candidates that is real, you know what I mean? That uh, the gaps is there and that gap is not left for organizations that are really doing this work to really pay attention to and uh, 
understanding that uh, all size does not fit all in many cases. And yeah, and um, having done that by policy wife to, to get the conversation started, I think it's a great way of moving forward. Thank you all so much. I was really struck with um, how something you brought up was connected to our research, was, which was a big impact of the pandemic, was that women lost access to networks. Um, and so we're really feeling kind of the recovery from that today, I think, as we network and build these connections in the support of collaboration and taking this work forward, um, moving beyond just conversations to a place where we are taking action. So uh, with that, we are uh, done our closing panel. Thank you so much for to each of the panelists. I know I've learned a lot from each of you, and it was really a delight to get to uh, connect with you all. Um, Policy-wise, would really like to thank our funder, uh, Wage, um, our collaborators, uh, Government of Alberta Status of Women, and Women Entrepreneur Knowledge Hub. I think I got that one right. Um, we are also really grateful to all of you for being here. Something that I kept hearing today was just how high quality the discussions were and how people were really learning from each other. And that's thanks to each and every one of you putting in your effort today. Um, as you get ready to head out. We have feedback surveys on the table. So if you could take a moment to fill those out, there's an orange bin on your way out where you can put those. Um, and if you have any questions as you kind of move out, um, we are gonna be hanging around so you can ask them. And finally, to close us off, I'd love to welcome Elder Tom Snow to um, close us off today. Thank you so much. I know, what can I Akinena <laughs> Thank you.